Welcome everyone to our Z Steep Club meeting tonight. As per usual, for the people that are not usually on here, uh, you know, uh, click on the chat logo and send a message and uh, read it, and you can type who it's going to go to, everyone or the organizer to a particular individual, and so forth. Okay. Uh, just so you know, for the, those of you that are guests, uh, we have uh, a study club, uh, ZST club, and then we also have webinars. And if you're a member of ZST club, you, you know, get to attend all of these. And sometimes we have special events like this evening where we open it up uh, to the public and uh, guests come on. And uh, you'll always be alerted uh, by email as to when the, the next session is. Uh, thank you, uh, as always, to our various uh, sponsors and supporters and partners. Uh, without them, uh, we wouldn't have the fabulous devices that we have to work with in, in helping our patients. We have a very special guest star tonight uh, presenting. Uh, um, as you know, uh, Barry and I go back uh, a ways and have taught together, have um, a great relationship, and I always enjoy listening to him. Uh, he's going to be talking to us about a brand new appliance, the Morpheus OSA Oral Appliance. Uh, he'll tell you the history, where it came from, um, and uh, the benefits of working with it. And I, I've, I've seen it only in picture, but it certainly looks like it would be a very good appliance to have in your arm armamentarium. Now, I'll be putting this slide up again at the end, okay? And the reason is that way you'll be able to capture this QR code and answer the few questions you need to answer in order to get the um, credits uh, for AGD uh, points and, and, and your certificate of attendance. Now, what I'm gonna do, Barry, is make you the presenter. So you just were sent a request to become presenter. If you could share your slides and the show is yours. Hi everybody, thanks for coming. Um, I, uh, there's, there's a lot to talk about. I, it's, this isn't like a real official uh, presentation. I think what, uh, what, you'll, what you'll know is that uh, being that it's about a, 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 an appliance that has some specific advantages and some specific disadvantages, um, that we will share all of them with you. Uh, I. Yes, I am. I helped design this appliance. I helped bring this appliance to the United States. Uh, I helped alter the design that was being offered in the UK and in Canada. Uh, I, I'll explain why I did that, why I particularly found that this was really an excellent appliance and became my go to appliance in my history. Um, certainly doesn't need to be yours. Uh, I want to make it clear that uh, right from the beginning, when we look at evidence, there's, it's really hard to pick up and say that one appliance is superior to another. Um, there's even questions now over custom appliances versus versus uh, 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 over the, uh, or not custom appliances. So that and there's there's some really good recent work that showed that mon monoblocks may be even uh, as effective, if not more effective, than titanium appliances uh, if you happen to get the right position. So th this is. Um, this isn't a, a sales pitch per se, it really isn't. I, I love this appliance, I loved working with it, I used it as my go-to and, and, and how we came to uh, making the changes we made is something I'll, I'll discuss with you because I think it's, it's, it's kind of interesting. I want to start by um, thanking John. Um, John and I go back a, a, a long ways, we hated each other for a long time. Uh, John was doing the pharyngometer, and uh, I couldn't understand why anybody would, would be talking about the pharyngometer and, 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 and have any respect for science. And at that point, John thought I was a neuromuscular dentist, so we, 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 were, we, were, we, were, we were not appreciated by each other. Uh, fate uh, happened, and we got together, and we found out that um, both of us were, were wrong uh, about each other. And I have... Um, I'm very sorry that COVID happened because until COVID happened, I was teaching with John on a regular basis up, up in, in this incredible learning center in, in Toronto. But I want to thank John um, uh, for opening this up and allowing so many of my friends to join his his, his group and uh, make this presentation. 
Oh, also on tonight is uh, Dr. Kirk Lynch. Kirk and I go back a, a long, long way, and I will discuss um, how fortunate we are to have Kirk uh, as the uh, clinical director or the uh, uh, certainly the, the, the go the, the uh, individual who's responsible for dealing with uh, and communicating with all of our dentists or for using the Morpheus uh, out of uh, our chosen distribution lab in uh, Halifax. Uh, and uh, St. John's in, in, in Nova Scotia. And also uh, with me tonight is uh, Dr. Don. Um, many of you know that Don and I uh, teach together on a regular basis. Um, uh, I keep Don around so that he can remind me whenever I do anything wrong, he corrects me and he's got every right and permission to do that again tonight. Um, but John, Don's uh, background knowledge and what he adds to our courses is, is, is incredible. And what he's added to, to help me learn about evidence-based medicine and dentistry and teach me about uh, so many factors is, is uh, uh, something I, I owe him a, a lifetime of gratitude for. Um, let me see why this is good. Get along with each other and each other. So, if we look, uh, and, and, and you know, <laughs> it's funny, I should, I should put personal journal into oral appliance therapy, because nothing irks me more than when somebody sends and spends the first 20 minutes talking about their, their family and where they live. So this, this but it is relevant. <laughs> so there's a reason I'm, I'm doing this. Uh, when I started at, with oral appliance therapy uh, before the turn of the century, which is really hard to say when you're uh, at about uh, uh, 25% through this century. But when I, when I started, uh, I started, uh, I learned a lot uh, in between uh, uh, both John Remmers and Keith Thornton. And so it became, the TAC appliance became uh, my go-to appliance. Uh, I really began using the TAP all exclusively when I started and uh, learn to use it uh, in incredible ways, learn to make it comfortable, learn to, to beat all the objections while having the tremendous advantages that we're going to discuss. Um, I wanted to make some changes to that tap design because there were things about it I didn't like and, and, and the company making uh, it is his lab would make the changes for me, but inconsistently. I was really unhappy. I mean, they, they were so they were growing, growing so fast. They have such a tremendous market share. We all know that. So, the, so I was so I, I went to Keith. And I said, you know what? I'm getting frustrated. I, I want to make this art myself. So he would just sell our lab the parts, and we had a full time lab technician, and that full time lab technician then made the appliances with the adjustments, with the changes uh, that I wanted to make. Over time, their lab realized that he'd done that several times with several people. They said, okay, we got to stop that. And they, they said, okay, we're going to make all the appliances. We're not selling parts anymore unless the lab, and then things started to change regulations, became FDA approved. So my lab became FDA approved. And I was one of the slurry mom and pop labs that, that did have appliances. That being said, I made a very special rule. And that is that I did not market the appliance. The only people we would uh, make tap for and accept prescriptions were for those people who actually took my course. Now, this wasn't in a way to try to sell my course because I was never going to die. But, but what this was was a way to protect myself because this way I knew that whoever was making the appliance was well trained. Unlike most people, unlike most taps, most taps are made with a, a, a triple laminate or laminate lining. My go-to was Thermocryl, and I'll explain why we, if we refer to this as Thermocryl, and I'll explain to you why we do that and uh, what that meant for us. Um, but if you're doing Thermocryl, you need to be trained just slightly. Otherwise, when you get that appliance, you'll think when you go to put it in, it doesn't fit. So, you know, you, you have to understand how to heat the material and et cetera. Now, we, you'll see that we have those instructions for anyone who wants to use Thermocryl. Uh, which is my preference, but yet a lot of people still, and under certain circumstances, it's better to use the, the reliable. So, so we're moving along and I'm doing all that and we're making appliances and, and I get a phone call 
from uh, Pete's, uh, Peter Sislipin. Now, many of you have read a lot of his work, Peter is uh, in, uh, Melbourne, in Melbourne, uh, Australia. And Peter is on the board and is promoting the Sound of Plants. And he's showing me, sending me pictures of this Sound of Plants. And I'm looking at the Sound of Plants and I'm saying, this can't work. It, we know this can't work. It's impossible for this to work. Why was I saying that? I was saying that because we know that when the mandible drops open, right, then that and, and the hyoid bone drops, there's altered musculature and there's the tendency to collapse. So you can't possibly have a mandible to drop, allowed to drop open as you can with a with a dorsal appliance, in my ignorance, and say you can't, that can't work. Well, he kept sending me statistics. And it was impressive, and it was, it was showing me how it was working, and it didn't make any sense to me. But there was no doubt about his uh, honesty, and there was no doubt about the statistics. So, Sondermen then decides to bring their appliance to the United States, and they reach out to me, and they say, ask me to teach for them. Now, at this point, I'm doing nothing but that. They asked me to teach. I said, okay, well, you know, I, I, I'll look at the appliance. I'll give it a try now. And, I, and I, I like the appliance. I like working with it. And I met with them. Uh, and, I, and, and it still wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't clear to me. Let me, let me fill you in on the secret. What, what the secret is, is that when the mandible is brought forward, its rotation now is totally altered. You can't rotate open with a dorsal, uh, with a mandible advanced, the same way you can rotate open with the mandible in its home place uh, in, 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 uh, with the condyle seated. So as long as you bring them in, so if you're using a dorsal, you should never start edge to edge. You should always come, or, or not edge to fan because you don't know the overhead is. You should never start without advancing the mandible at least two millimeters to start with when you're using a dorsal. I didn't know that then. It didn't make any sense then. Now it does. So they, they hire me and I, I go on a tour, a national tour with Sonda Med, teaching the Sonda, Sonda, Sonda Den. I, we did 25 cities in 50 weeks. I was younger then. They put in over a million dollars of investment into the into the course here. Trust me, it wasn't to the speaker, but it, 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 between all the travel and all the, all, all, all and, and all the incredible food they ate wherever they went. So uh, we moved uh, through twenty five cities in in fifteen weeks. The only agreement that I made that they 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 they, they, they that it was required was that I couldn't I wasn't going to teach industry. In other words, it wasn't just going to teach the Sandman. So I taught the Sandman appliance, but I also taught the town and when it should be used versus the Sandman then vice versa. Because putting them both in your armamentarium it, it does make sense. So you don't need eighteen appliances in my mind. You need maybe two or three and get good at those two or three, but those two are very different and have very, uh, while most patients can be treated with both, there are some that would be, you're better off with the tap and some you're better off with the dorsal. So that was the agreement. Now, some of gets new leadership and they go, they go up to me and say, okay, you know, uh, Barry, this is really good, but you know, uh, we really like your, your teaching because the ice continued to teach at their academy after the year was up and they said, well, <clears throat> Uh, but you're you're making uh, 20, 25, appliance, about 50 sandwiches a, a month, and people are asking why you're not making more. I, I couldn't believe it. They, they were. They, I said, you mean to tell me when someone says how many appliances you're making, you're telling them how many I'm making? So well, we know that you're making taps, and we want you to make all something. So the minute I make an appliance, because I want to keep a job is the minute I should leave the job. So uh, I'm not sure who said I was leaving first them or me, but I think it was them. Um, and uh, I stopped working for some of it. Why is this not advancing? So when we talk about an oral appliance discussion, we first of all, we're gonna talk about uh, when we come about appliance choices, the, the first thing that's often discussed is AHI. And 
you and I both know that for a long time it's been suggested that oral appliances are only recommended for mild to moderate cases. And yet, there were mild cases we would fail in and there were severe cases we would succeed in. And, and so there were so many outliers that even saying that out loud wasn't a good idea. And now it's been definitely demonstrated that that's, there's, there's no logic to that. So we don't pick oral appliances based upon AHI and severity. At the same time, when we there are other factors that we look at to help determine whether or not we think of what step we're going to take. And the one thing I think about when I think about advanced or, or connected appliances is that I'm more comfortable with a connected appliance when I know that I've eliminated and I'm looking to eliminate all the possible complications and all the possible issues that may make this case worse. Um, uh, I tend to go to a connected appliance. Now, all the dorsals literally are literally saying the same thing. What do they say? Well, we're going to make elastic. And if you want elastic, um, uh, it, because we need to keep the mouth closed, then we can, we can add the elastics and you can use that on your dorsal. So literally they're saying the same thing. That, but my question is, number one, one of the biggest advantages of a dorsal and I, and I will, if you've got a patient who's extremely ill, who has, has some, uh, is some significant chronic pain, the last thing we want to do is put an extremely tight appliance in their mouth. So if in fact their teeth are shaped without the bell curve, and, with, and, and, and don't have a significant retention, and we're worried about retention, uh, then the last thing, I, then I wouldn't use a morphine. I would use a dorsal appliance that requires less um, less retention because you're not fighting the depressors during uh, during the night, and the mandible can open, and you're not, and and you won't disengage. So that that makes that makes perfect sense. The surprising thing is that you need less retention than we thought you did. People used to test for tension by putting their appliances in and, and, and opening and seeing if the appliance came out. And if the appliance came out, well, any appliance will come out if you do that. The reality is that that's not what happens at night. You're using awake parameters to determine whether or not it's going to be effective during nocturnal physiology. It doesn't work that way. So we're going to talk about retention um, in, a, in a little bit. Now we can talk about oral appliance and CPAP, and we know the whole story there. And I'm I'm not going to bore all of you it, with Adam Dam and Stuhl and Van der Kerken and Sullivan and all the all the studies that demonstrate uh, that there's no real significant difference uh, in uh, a, a preventing severe, fatal or uh, severe consequences from uh, sleep apnea between oral appliances. And, be, and, 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 uh, and CPAP in severe cases. It's, it, it's incredible uh, statistics. So now we get to, uh, so then when, when we go to look and say, okay, what's our appliance choice? And you know, I gotta be honest, I've heard a lot of courses and a lot of people talking about how to choose which appliance for that individual patient. And I find that almost all of it is is less than anecdotal. It's it's it seems to be logical when we start talking about vectors and forces on teeth and whatnot. But it really really doesn't seem to be an issue. We've used an anterior midpoint stop appliance with like a tap on on lower anterior teeth from canine to canine that were loose without loosening them further. So. To suggest that that's uh, that is is a is necessarily a problem it is incorrect. And some of the factors that people suggest are necessary to pick oral appliance therapy out. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I I question what do, what do, what do I recommend for picking oral appliances? Number one, um, I want to know how how tight that appliance has to be, and if that appliance has to be tight. If that patient's ill, if that patient has severe chronic disorders, if that patient's got uh, uh, significant 
going to solve it. If, if, if there's significant things going on, if it's at all possible, I'm going to go uh, with a dorsal clepopias and not a morphous cortex. However, the vast majority of patients, other than that, can, I prefer going with that connected appliance because I know I've eliminated the potential created by opening. And I also know how flexible this appliance can be. I'll choose an appliance almost regularly that's, that is uh, thermocryl or, or thermaline uh, aligned. And the reason we do that is it's incredible flexibility. Once I uh, use another liner and I've lost attention, I've lost attention. Yeah, maybe you can heat up that, uh, if you've got thermocryl or a, a laminate appliance and you, uh, it's, you've lost your tension, yeah, you can put it in hot water and you can squeeze it a little bit and, and, and distort it just slightly and, and make it fit and sometimes that'll work for you. There's no question about it. You have total control when you talk about um, uh, uh, therm a thermal line. So what are the keys to an ideal appliance? One, appropriate fit versus versus uh, 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 versus perfection. Now, I, well, this is this is difficult for me because I, I, I there's there, there's some of some of the work of the newer appliances. To be honest with you, is excellent. There's I am not in any way, shape, or form being negative about the newer printer printed and uh, well-constructed, good-looking appliances, no question. The suggestion that they're better because they fit perfectly makes zero sense to me, zero. Um, I don't want an appliance to fit perfectly because frankly, you and I both know when you take that impression or you take that scan, the next day there's been some movement. Just, just, just. So you may add some tolerance to that, which they'll do sometimes, we just need to but they're still, frankly, I think, fitting too well. I think of teeth as a way to hold the appliance in place and I don't want them fitting or any tighter than it needs to be in order to solve, do the job it's supposed to do. It's not a dental appliance. It's an oral appliance for a medical condition. So this, here's my, my take, and I want you to consider this. We're dentists. The companies that came into the market need to sell to dentists. So what the tendency is to do, to do is to look and see what dentists want in a dental appliance and give it to them and therefore they feel better about the appliance because they're judging the appliance as though it's a dental appliance. It's not. It's an oral appliance for medicine and it doesn't need to be what we think of when we're thinking of an orthodontic appliance. Need to forget about everything. The biggest problem with retainers that we make or the biggest problem for with night guards that we make, the reason that most people aren't complying with night guards is because they're too tight. So, we want the appliances only tight enough to do the job they're supposed to do. This thought that if they're fit perfectly, we're not going to get tooth movement doesn't work. It doesn't work. There's still forces on the teeth and the appliances come off. That it, I, I, we, still, we still can get minor movement. And the point is we get minor movement without appliances. So, but who's responsible for the movement? Big question. Not the issue. I have to say that using the appliance that I've used in all these years, tooth movement is not, is not a problem. And with that comes the fact that we don't cover all the teeth. We'll talk about super eruption. And we don't wrap the distals most of the time. Now, with our appliance, we set up a prescription that allows you to do that. You can have to do it any way you want. I'm just suggesting it's not necessary. One of the things that people say about our, 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 our combined appliance, our, our, our connected appliance, is that they're worried about its comfort. And we'll get to that in a second, but uh, what I will tell you 
is what has been demonstrated to be more com more uncomfortable is a full profile, full coverage. You shorten the profile, which we've done with Amorpheus. That's an option. You don't do a full coverage, which we've done with Amorpheus as an option. And it's amazing how comfortable the appliance becomes. The next thing we want, so we want appropriate retention, but not too much. And we want to be able to make it easy for the patient to titrate. Now that that's a doctor's decision. I think that at this point, most everyone is allowing the patient to titrate. I started that early and I was criticized immensely by, by many of the, my fellow uh, or uh, other gurus who were teaching and so that they needed to have control of the dentist, they gotta make the appointment. I think that at this point, most of us are, um, are allowing our patients to titrate. Um, we want an appliance to be durable. So one of the advantages again of, um, uh, of this appliance is that with the anterior midpoint stop, one, we know we're getting decreased forces. So the bruxism was, is not gonna do the damage to the appliance. And we can actually make the appliance thinner as long as we maintain the anterior contact. And the other thing is that when it comes to the lining, my favorite, again, is the is, is the Thermaline. And one of the reasons I love the Thermaline, honestly, one of the reasons I love the Thermaline is that, yes, we give instructions on how to keep it from staining, and we hope that it will stay. <laughs> because I want to maintain contact with this patient. I want this patient coming back. And in about two years, three years, we find it's a really good idea to take that material out, replace it. It's a it's a 20 minute procedure, uh, and we wind up with a brand new, perfectly fitting in terms of appropriate retention appliance. So uh, that's what I love about the Thermopro. Obviously, it's got the advantage if you're doing dentistry and whatnot. I, I think that's overstated. I, I think you can do any appliance, unless you do a major dentistry, you know, five units into the bridge or more, then the, obviously the thermocol is an advantage, but minor dentistry, almost any appliance can be adjusted. Maybe we should um, when it comes to effectiveness, there's a lack of good studies. There, if you get onto the, the TAP site, you'll get some literature that demonstrates when they look at some uh, system, systematic an analysis, uh, uh, some meta analysis, you will see uh, the suggestion that uh, a connected appliance uh, may be better, but it's 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 not it's it's not solid. Uh, good evidence. I want lip seal. Obviously, that potential for a lip seal and room for the tongue. And uh, <laughs> when I was doing the the, uh, the Samana, uh, uh the LVI decided came up. They're the ones who came up with the lingulus somnolent, which made no sense to me and still doesn't because they they when I when we challenged them to do a study uh, because they were doing a lingular summit at a neuromuscular position um, the study was they did the study they told me they was doing it and then somehow I don't understand it never got published anyway um, we, we do want the lip seal uh, which I don't know is problematic with it with a new tap flex I'm not sure uh, it's we've seen that it certainly was a problem with the tap one and the tap flexes like that. But uh, room for the tongue, uh, there are several ways to get room for the tongue and we know that uh, some really good work has been done with our obese males and showed the advantage of increasing the vertical to seven or eight millimeters, which is readily done uh, with the morphines. But the other way to get increased room for the tongue would be to shorten uh, our morphine. So you can go first by to first by, even canine to canine, and I'll show you that. And now you've got lots of lateral movement, lots of lateral space uh, uh, added to the tongue. And you still uh, have the, uh, without cutting down uh, and trying to make an appliance lingulus. We talked about the possible advantages of a connected appliance. Let me go back one. Each other, each other. So, uh, comfort. You know, this is really interesting because there is this assumption that, and, and you know, I jumped all over the sound of because I love the fact that you could, uh, at a dorsal, could you could drink water with it and you could talk with it and they weren't connected. Um, and and it, seemed, it seemed to be a, a, a better uh, in terms of comfort for that reason. 
And yet, when I thought about it, my patients weren't telling me that they weren't comfortable with their appliance. And interestingly enough, no one's done a study to compare two appliances with a washout period with several patients to determine whether or not they're comfortable. People often say to me, well, I want a soft appliance because it's more comfortable. Well, I put that Solomon Flex in and I found it and my patients found it horrendous. Why? Because the softer appliances require a larger profile. Remember I said, the longer the profile, the more boxed in the patient thing to the senior field. So I'm not sure that a soft appliance uh, is any any more comfortable than an acrylic or a thermal line appliance. I've had docs say to me, I try in every appliance, so I personally will know how everybody will feel when they put the appliance in. And I want to say to them, no, no, you don't know how everyone will feel. You only know how you will feel. And, and, and it really is unique. And as I said, I was amazed when I looked back on my history and I realized that I was putting in some of the meds when I thought the patient needed more comfort. And yet that was based on some sort of logic. When in fact, we weren't having people coming back to me with a tab saying it wasn't comfortable. We talked about the profile. We talked about ideal fit and lining choice. One of the advantages of the thermal, oh, thermal line is that I get to I get to choose how tight I want it to be in, in the methods. We know that we, when you get that thermal uh, appliance, you, uh, you heat it up for uh, 15, 20, 25 seconds until it turns at uh, 180 degrees, until it turns, or hot water, until it turns clear, right? And then amazingly, you take it out and it's not too hot for the patient and you put it in and you are uh, gentle up and down, up and down, and then leave it in place for 15, 20 seconds. And now maybe a little longer, 30 seconds, and now you're gonna lift it up and you will feel whether or not it's your tent. You will feel, is it a hold? Is it, is it, is it, is, is it? And if it just lifts up, boom, right to the cold water, distorts it, and it'll fit perfectly. And if it lifts up with a with a drag, with a with retention, then you let it bend seat, and then when it turns white, it'll fit perfectly. Uh, there are those that suggest that these precision appliances not only fit perfectly, but they're precision because they will, ideally, they will be perfect in duplicating your bike registration, which would really be amazing if your bike registration was done with any level of intelligence. <laughs> but there is no such technique. Uh, I'm not going to go into pharyngometers. I'm not going to go into airway metrics. I'm just going to suggest that there is no good method to predict oral appliance positioning. And that much of the work has demonstrated that oftentimes we even start too far out and that we can do better at lower levels of protrusion and going slowly. So uh, comfort is obviously critical and going too far out initially can be emotionally not in our best interest. So the suggestion that it's precision and therefore, I mean, I've actually been told that some of these appliances because they're, they, they're so perfect and because they're so comfortable and because they're, they're fit so perfectly that they will get the same result. Literally, this has been said from a DS. Uh, they will get the same result as another appliance that you had to go further out to get that result. And when I asked for those studies, interestingly enough, I found out they don't exist. So it, it's, 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 it's just not true. Um, the, um, um, we talked about the tendency to provide dental advantages are not necessarily making medical, better medical appliances. And finally, when we look at where these fees were going and the direction this was headed, um, you and I both know that it is in our total best interest if we could provide more services to more people. And that economics sometimes really does get into the way. And what was a price sensitive market suddenly stopped being a price sensitive market. And I suspect maybe some of that was insurance. I don't really know. But I felt if we could keep the lab fees reasonable, um, it would be better for everyone. So we decided to make this fee 
a, a reasonable fee. And right now, uh, uh, the fee to do the lab is 300, to do the appliance is $375, uh, which includes shipping to your office. So if you're scanning to us, uh, that's, that, that'll be your total cost. And if you're not scanning to us, then you have the cost of shipping to us, plus it's $375. So uh, we think that that's, uh, I'm excited about that. I spent a lot of time with Kirk uh, working on the Morpheus design prescription because, <clears throat> because we have some real advantages in, in, in terms of uh, making this customized and unique. And the, uh, yes. Barry? Yes. Sorry, Barry, can I ask a question? Because uh, this is um, a Canadian lab. So when you said that price, is that a US dollar price or is it a Canadian dollar? Kirk, you can explain that. Yeah, what we did, John, for American customers, we, we can set up their account in US dollars. So to avoid confusion for American customers, if they're using their visa, uh, it just goes right on as USD. So at the current conversion, uh, ours, I think, is 500 Canadian. So the, the cost in Canada is 500 Canadian, which is really yeah. what I'm looking for. Yeah. Okay. And thank yours, you very much. And yours would vary a little bit based on convert. It wouldn't vary based on conversion, I should say. So if you call up, you're just getting a Canadian dollar account. Uh, right. But when, when Don registers, we just put him in a US dollars account. Right. But in round numbers, the Canadian cost right now is $500 for that appliance. That's it. Okay. Yeah. How does that, John, how does that compare? Just, I'm just curious. Uh, to, uh, uh, you know, I, I have to believe it's uh, approximately 100 or close to that, uh, less than what a TAP3 is, but I, I might be wrong. I, no, I, no, I, I don't really remember 100%, so, but I, I think it's less, yeah. I'm not, I don't know, just curious. Um, and, and one of the things that we're, we're, we're trying to do and I don't, I, I this, listen, we're, <laughs> I don't think um, TAP is worried about uh, Morpheus' effect on their market share. One, one of the things we're really trying to do is to treat the Hallmark lab the way I treated my lab. And that is to get, uh, to have a, a, a customer base of people who we know, who we know what their preferences are, who we can work with and Kirk can work with directly. Uh, and and um, make a few people really happy. That, that's that's our goal. Uh, not certainly. There will be no national marketing program. There will be. You won't see the Morpheus in in, in a journal. Uh, we're not doing. That. We're just. We're, that's that's not our goal. Uh, we we want to be helping the right people. So the Morpheus design uh, prescription looks like this. Uh, you'll see it's 10, day, 10 uh, working days standard delivery when we receive the case. Uh, and that means that if you're scanning it, you'll get it uh, within 10 working days. And uh, you can order a, 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 we just need to uh, a, a emergency or a, a express a delivery if you, if you need it. And then, uh, of course, that, that 10 days starts from the day that either the appliance uh, is scanned or we receive uh, the models in, in the office. Uh, Thermaline uh, or dual laminate, you have your choice. Um, we, <laughs> because it's me, Thermaline's the, the default, which, which concerns me. So if you want the, the dual laminate, you have to make sure you, you, you make it clear that's what you want. Um, the double bar or single bar uh, will show you the, the difference. The double bars are default. There's no, really no reason not to use it, but some people may prefer going to a single bar plate. Flat, uh, plate. Uh, whether you have a flat trim or a low profile. So the flat, uh, we'll give a low profile, which means it's you'll, you'll, you'll uh, minimally pass the height of contour. Uh, and and uh, that's uh, only offered on the, what, what's hydroplane, hydroplastic line? Is that laminate? Okay. I never saw that term. Uh, what that is, the that's the uh, non-brand name for the liner. That's the, the, the thermal line. line. The thermal yeah. line. 
Yeah, Thermocurl, Thermaline, those are all kind of uh, brand name or, or proprietary. The non-proprietary is, is uh, the, the Hydroplast. Right, right. I think we've so, changed that. So, so I, that I makes it right. So the low profile, the shorter profile is only available for the for the, for the Thermocurl or the Thermaline and the, uh, et cetera. Then you can wrap, how you wrap up that distal tooth, um, Boy, it's really acting is funny. One second, I'm sorry. I'll get back. How you wrap that distal tooth, or do you want it a shorter arch? And if you you can, you can you can you can draw it and show us exactly where you want where you want that supply to go. And you'll you'll see an example of that in a second. So there's the profile option. There's a, that's the full profile on the right, and I love the thermocryl use with this with this with this shorter profile it's that's my favorite uh for for many many reasons um you can look at the thermal line appliance on the left and you can look at the dual laminate on the right um, um it's just a different line the left has more flexibility in terms of retention um the, and requires special care the right also needs a different kind of care uh, and has less flexibility in terms of uh, adding or subtracting attention. Um, I love the thermal line. We talked about that. We talked about how it's used. Uh, there are instructions given on, on its use. And also, anyone using an Morpheus, you're going to learn very shortly, has uh, option at extreme levels of support with us. So. Um, um, my wife was concerned when I heard this. She said, you know, you're already married and you will be committing polygamy. And I accept that. Uh, that's so be it. But um, I, we're here to help. The, and you, I could never do this if we went uh, at the level that uh, uh, most appliance companies do. Uh, but I'm, uh, my goal is to make uh, those people who choose this appliance efficient and effective with it. So titration is easy uh, uh, in, in our way of thinking. It, it's um, uh, it's simplified and it's stable. One of the bigger advantages we, we, we have now with this new Morpheus is that the titration assembly has uh, some, uh, has increased stability. So there's not the play that, I, uh, that I've experienced with in the past. So it's very, very, now let me make it very clear. This in no way, shape, or form makes the appliance more effective. <laughs> it's not like it's, oh, well, therefore it's fit, it's better. No, it's, it's no better as a result of it. It's just more stable and easier for patients to adjust and for you to adjust and to know where a patient is. So the key goes in place and it gets turned to the right to move the, to move forward and you'll notice that there are nine millimeters built in to the original titration screw. In most cases, it will never have to be adjusted to get more titration. The logo is used in the titration process so we can tell how far, if you turn that Morpheus and you put it in place and you turn it one half a turn, right? That's a quarter of a millimeter. Right? And then a full turn, therefore be a half a millimeter. So it goes into place. This will be a full turn. That's one full turn. That's a half a millimeter forward. Uh, one of the things I like about this is it's very secure. So when we made the key, we made it fit perfectly into a slot. Half a millimeter for, for, per full turn. So we're gonna make several full turns here. That's half a millimeter. That's one millimeter forward. Millimeter and a half. And two millimeters. And there it's marked and you can follow where the patient is, two millimeters. One of the things that was problematic for us was that we were getting with regularity some reversal 
Rick knows about this O2 well, right, Rick? So reversal of from pressure and the, wherever we would set the titration, it tended to drop back. So we solved that um, by taking thermocryl and putting it behind so that it couldn't drop back. And then when it moved forward, it would create a little space and the next time the patient came, we'd refill that back with the thermocryl. But it was a pain in the neck because there'd be times that we would lose effectiveness with the drop. So we now have improved tolerances on the metal injection mold. We changed uh, the, uh, the angle of the screw and the threads and this no longer happens. So we don't get reversal uh, with uh, the new titration screw. As a default, we will start the appliance at one millimeter. So that leaves you eight millimeters to go forward and one millimeter back if you find that wherever you started, you need to reverse for comfort. Put away our problems. If you're insecure with your posture or you try to get a little aggressive, it's not a problem. You just tell our lab, I want it started at three. So that would give you three millimeters to go back and five millimeters forward. So depending upon where that patient is, how far they can true, how far you need to get to get to their maximum, you, you can make that determination. We can help you if there's a question. And then we can set that starting point wherever is best for you. The coverage options. We've also made this easy in the prescription. It's almost, it's there, it doesn't exist in any of the prescriptions because no one, everyone thinks that, oh, I want to wrap this around the distal. And you can do that. That's an option. Or you can cover that second molar halfway, just cover it to the mesial marginal ridge if you want. That's an option. Or you can go shorter and you can go and leave that first molar totally uncovered Maybe we should and cover have. only to the mesial marginal ridge a uh, second molar uncovered, and only to the mesial marginal ridge of the first molar. And you can do that. And what we know is that concern that we had about extrusion, if it's not covered, is invalid as long as the patient is removing the appliance to eat, which I suspect in this case they will. Just saying. In fact, this is an old picture of mine from an old tap that we used. Uh, in, in my pictures, I went back and grabbed this. This was a patient who was a gagger. And what a great appliance to use because we can get as much retention as we need, canine to canine, in this case, first buy to first buy, and with nothing back then. And this gagger was able to use the appliance. And again, no history of super erupt. And if there's a question on whether or not, why they don't super erupt, then I would suggest in May, um, of this year, you can come to Florida and take our occlusion and TMD course, and uh, and, and uh, which is evidence based, and and we spend most of our time on occlusion and power functional control. And you'll learn why that doesn't happen. Or if you can wait till August, uh, we're doing a sleep course here, and in September we're doing a sleep course in in um, Halifax, and we will cover all that uh, with evidence. So. Uh, now, when we talk about um, why we like anterior midpoint stops, we design the appliance and uh, one of the things about uh, the other appliances that are anterior midpoint stops is often they give you an option whether you want posterior contact or not. Um, you can have that, but it makes literally no sense. There's no reason to have posterior contact. We, we know and we're looking at EMGs on the left and EMGs on the right with with and without contact. So we know that with decreased, uh, with, without posterior contact, we have decreased forces, right? So that leads to less damage to the appliance, less changes. No, we don't get, uh, uh, people look, oh, all those forces on those anterior teeth. No, it's in the long axis of those teeth. And no, we don't get increased mobility, even in situations like we had for the gagger. It just doesn't happen. However, Asagawa now comes back and does a study and demonstrates that we've got less cerebral volume uh, of the uh, of cerebral volume when there's no posterior contact. But with less cerebral volume, 
becomes less um, nasal resistance. That cerebral volume is the same is the same activity that we see in REM. It's the same activity that we see uh, in, in, in migrators. And we know that in migrators, if you look at a migrant or during the migrant event, if you look into their nose, you will see it's, it's inflamed and swollen from that increased nasal resistance. Now, interesting enough, when the migraine goes away, if you look in the nose, it's gone. It's gone. Right? We're getting, let, this is so interesting to me because for many years when we were using anterior midpoint stop appliances like an NTI or b -split, patients would come back to me, I swear. They would come back and they'd say, you know, Dr. Barry, it's amazing, I'm, I'm not snoring. And I'm thinking, oh, that doesn't make any sense. It's not holding your jaw forward. Why is it, you know, okay, a little bit because you can't close, so it's a little far anterior, but seriously? That doesn't make any sense. And now it makes perfect sense why that's happening. So we know that a lot of our patients do a lot better when we consider the nasal valve and we consider the nose. We have strong reasons to believe that anterior midpoint stops does just that. And so you combine mutes or something along those lines with an anterior midpoint stop and you are dealing directly uh, with nasal, with nasal resistance. We thought for a long time that some of the improvements that we were seeing in these systematic uh, reviews with connected appliances was because the appliances was, were connected. Now I question that. Now I wonder if we're not seeing improved responses because we're not getting posterior time and we're dealing with nasal resistance. More examples of that, and those of you, most of you have been in my courses and you've, you've seen too many of those. So where did all this start? So I started teaching for a, 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 a couple guys that, that own a lab that only makes appliances, and that's S4S, and S4S stands for uh, Splints for Snoring. They started doing sleep appliances in London, where they are many, many, many decades behind us when it comes to sleep, for sure. And they, they started doing these sleep appliances, and then they expanded, and they, they have their own, own orthodontic lab, and they have their own smile line, which is very interesting. Um, um, uh, yeah, all, 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 all to plastic liners. Uh, I can't come up with the name because I'm old, but I, they they have, uh, and I would come and do a course for them for the last 10 years. I've been to London every year, except for the COVID. And I saw that they were doing sleep, and, and, and interestingly enough, they didn't want me to teach any of their sleep courses because the way they have to handle sleep there is so very different legally because of uh, uh, the, the different status that you're in. So, I'm looking and I'm seeing that they have an, uh, their own we appliance called a sleep well, and it's got this semi-improved titration screw. I'm looking at it and said, well, you know, if you did this and this and this, and we did this the appliance, we did this appliance, well, let alone all the go, and they make all the changes that I wanted to make, and they contact me and said, is this what you meant? And it was incredible. I said, yeah, that's great, oh my goodness. That's exactly what I wanted for the appliance that I was making uh, when I was back in my office. And we decided to bring the appliance uh, to the United States. Meanwhile, all this time, little did I know, the Sleepwell, which is what it was called, not the Lambert Sleepwell, but the Sleepwell was being made in Canada by a lab called Hallmark Lab. Didn't know that. So we formed a U.S. company. We just approved the design. We decided how I, I knew how I wanted the customer service oriented. I knew how I wanted to keep the low fees. And then, in order to get it to the United States, we had to go through a 510k process, which I, and the tap became our credit advice. Now, you would think it was simple, but it was somewhere in the middle. In the middle of this thing, they came to 510. The government, the, uh, FDA, came back to us and said, "It's all good. It really looks good, except." Your aligner, your aligner needs to be animal tested. Now, it's the same alignment that's used in every appliance. So why does that have to be animal tested? It needs to be animal tested because it's in your appliance and it may act differently in your shell than it does in someone else's. This material is the same, what are you talking about? So $150,000 and nine months later, 
we had the animal testing completed and we got a 510k. We now have applied for PDAC approval. Um, uh, we just learned from Kirk that it, it's a three month process and we are two months and three weeks through the process. So we have every reason to believe that it is uh, pending and certainly uh, just uh, a week or two away. We now needed to get it distributed. Obviously, we knew that Hallmark was, was making already making them. We needed to change the way they made them to, to now fit the improved design. Um, and lo and behold, I learned that Dr. Kirk Blanchard, who I can't tell you, um, is, a, is has, we have a long history, is a dear, dear friend, uh, and was part of our Allentown Forum, was with me when I was teaching for bio-research many, many years ago, was teaching for bio-research himself. Uh, I, I went through uh, his move out of dentistry with him and his move into executive coaching and finally has moved to, to become the ambassador uh, for all the dentists uh, using this small, uh, relatively small, but incredibly advanced, uh, family-oriented, uh, family-owned lab. And what a perfect fit. And I can only tell you how incredible they've been through this entire process as they got themselves up there approved in order to make the plans. They've done all the work in, in terms of getting this PDAC approved. Um, they can accept all of your scans, no matter what it is. Uh, and they've, they've, I've been with them as they've trained their technicians uh, to the new design. And I, I'm extremely excited about them. And what I'm most excited about is all of our guys uh, gals who will be using this appliance will have Kirk uh, as their ambassador to, with a direct connection and me, uh, as you'll see in a minute. So we have created a private Facebook page. And when you have your first appliance made with us, uh, with more, you will get a link and be accepted as on that page. That page is where information will be shared. We want, we want to hear the problems. We want to hear the pluses. We want to hear how things are going. Uh, we'll be in constant contact via, via, via that, that. And you can contact each other. You can contact us. But more than that, I want you to know that anyone who uses a Morpheus has access to me uh, directly uh, in support for your Morpheus cases. And I'll go further than that. You know, of course, I'll help you. Uh, and, and anyway, with any of your cases, it does have to be more. Um, so I, that's my email. Everyone will have my email. We can all, uh, I prefer the communication, obviously on the Facebook page, because that way everyone gets to learn from everybody's uh, communications. Uh, but if there's something personal or there's something immediate and you, you need to get to it, just know that uh, uh, we're here to help. So how do you get started? And, and, those who have taken my course will recognize this picture. So this is where it all starts, right? This is my consult room. And, and uh, you know that I strongly recommend that when you do your, your medical oriented concept, uh, con consults, whether it be for craniofacial pain, whether it be for sleep, that it be in a non-dental setting. Not everybody has the, the ability to set up something as ideal as this, and I appreciate that. But everybody's got an office and you just, like clean it up, <laughs> you can use it. But this is where we start the process. And I thought that was ideal for the, the, the slide that says, how do you get started? One, contact Kirk. And you can contact him, uh, you can get this email from Kirk to, to him, please, you, know, you can record that. Or you can phone contact him at 902-476-7909. Kirk will speak with you directly and he'll get and set up your, to find out more about you, find out what you want, find out uh, how you want your account set up, find out uh, how you're gonna be sending cases, right? Uh, you can use the prescription that I showed you and you can download that prescription from the Morpheus webpage. You can use that prescription if you're sending in cases and if you're scanning them, you wanna just use the prescription to, to fill out the information as you in the scan so that you don't miss anything. So you can explain exactly what you want. That, that prescription itself doesn't go with the scan, but you should use it to follow along and make sure you get everything in. And then send the cases or scan them to the Hallmark Lab and then allow the, the 10 days that we talked about. 
Uh, we are making a couple a couple of, uh, of offers because that's what, what we're supposed to do with these things. And one is there's a, an introductory offer for anyone on this uh, call. And it goes through to May 6th. It's two months from today. When you send your case in or you scan it, use your discount code on your prescription, Barry 100. And what that does for your first case or your second case, if they're both sent together, please not two separate. If they're both sent together, if you're doing two cases, send them both in, and both of them will be reduced $100 each to 275 from the normal lockdown. So use the code Barry100. You can use, use it for one appliance. You can use it for two appliances as long as they are together and they are submitted and arrived to the lab by May 6th. In addition, uh, for those that would like uh, to uh, readdress and come back to a course, uh, obviously things have changed. Obviously things have been updated. I married Uncle Don, so uh, we, we know how updated they tend to be. Uh, you can come back to you can come to a course and um, uh, in Melbourne, Florida. We have it right here at the beach side. Hotel. The information is is on either of these sites. So if you were to go to uh, let's go to this one. So if you were to go to the just a Glassman Seminars site and then you go to seminars and hit dental sleep medicine. There's the course. These are the tickets to purchase it, All right? So right now, the early bird expires July 30th. That's 1895. With it, of course, comes an appliance. We actually go to an office and do insertions, etc. We do hands-on exams, and that's a full two-day. So you can you can you can do that. Uh, however, if you use the code that that's on the slide, I'll go back to it in a second. And, but here, uh, the full description of the course. And the hotel information, the hotel link. And then there's another course in, uh, is it the end of September? For the, our Canadian friends and our, and our friends in, 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 uh, who would like to spend a great weekend in Halifax. So there's a, a, a course in, in, in September. Let's see what that is. Here it is. Halifax in the lab with a hotel uh, uh, just uh, just near, nearly across the street and uh, flying into Halifax. And again, using the lab, the lab has uh, 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 places to, to uh, 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 surgeries to, to insert appliances and uh, do exams and we do a full hands-on course there as well in September. And, this, and the same thing goes. So if I go back to my slide, um, if you use the this, uh, if you, re you register online uh, for those, but in when you register, it's already 1895. It's already cut down to six, uh, 1695 with early bird that expires July 30th for Melbourne and Florida and September 29th for Halifax. If you use the Sleep 100 code, it reduces it by another 100 bucks, and Sleep Can 100 for the Halifax code. And it reduces that 1695 to 1595, which is a full two-day course, um, plus uh, which includes uh, an appliance for you uh, and to uh, utilize and uh, for yourself. And I think I think that does it. So I, I appreciate everyone's attention. I, I, I hope this has been helpful. I'm sure that we've raised some questions and uh, and uh, can have a discussion. So uh, I'm all ears. John? Sue Ellen Richardson, how are you? My goodness. Well, you're thirsty. <laughs> Good to see you. Hi, George. Tony? Joanne? Bob Joan? Great. Dana, Roland Nomi, We're, you're out on the West Coast, are you not, Roland? Roland's not talking. John, anything? Any questions? Any issues? I, I have a question, Barry. If sure. I, John. I this is John. Um, I'm assuming the appliance you showed there was what you were referring to was the, was the toolbar. 
it didn't really look like two bar, but I'm assuming that's what it is. It looks like it has more lateral movement than yes. than the regular what we think of as a tap. Is that correct? Uh, I yes. Uh, you know, it's interesting. I think it's an advantage. I'm not sure. Right. The answer is yes. So one of the issues with the with with uh, re, with the receptacle, there were two issues with the receptacle. The two issues with the receptacle was one, it didn't provide as much lateral as many of us thought was advantageous. Okay. And two, remember the receptacle had a little notch in it. Yeah. Yeah. And exactly. that notch allowed for disclusion, the dis distraction, separation. And therefore, it wasn't Medicare approved. That's why they were forced to go to a double bar for okay. PDAC approval. Of course, we never used that. Initially, what we just did was took the acrylic and filled in that little notch so that it couldn't get out. Um, however, I really like the mandibular plate uh, for several reasons. Number one, it's got full range. So we do have wider movement. Uh, I think it may be an advantage. I don't have any evidence of that. But the other thing is, if I need to even go beyond the five millimeters, this plate is easy to move in your own office. So you could move it back and bring the jaw forward. And then back up the appliance and then start to titrate from there. Oh, that's, so, that's super. Yeah, it becomes, so you actually have, you have more than nine and, and with that plate. So that's why I make that double bar, which is printed, uh, double bar and it's the same um, uh, material as the titration screw so it's, it's it's really high quality and and that's why we we made it um, as opposed to uh, a, a single plate or or a receptacle right thanks John good question okay, perfect another one other question and then I'll then I'll be quiet here um, quiet. when you're going to add more thermoplastic material to it or thermaline to it um, are you using an, an adhesive? No, 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 ever, never to use an adhesive. So that's a, and that's in the instructions. So we know um, the key to adding thermal. So e let's 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 make it even more important. First of all, thermocrylle will uh, adapt to thermocrylle. Thermaline will adapt to thermaline. So if you just heat the thermaline up it with a a little bunch of burner or something in a little, little small section or if it's you're you're, you're changing the, uh, the distal of uh, the, the upper then you just put that in the hot water that little portion of hot water and then add the third and then, then take a, a couple beads and put it in water and put it in a microwave right and then uh, 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 and then and or or uh, hot just hot you just pour water from from a microwave and put the beads in that now what you get, now you take it out and just pull it out and add that right to it, right to the thermocrylle and it'll adapt. And now you can heat the whole thing and readapt that. When you're replacing the thermocrylle, you take all the thermocrylle out, which you just soften it. So if you, you don't want to make it too soft because it gets gooey and then hard to remove. Just soften it slightly and then it actually picks up in one piece. Now you go ahead and make a whole big shell Add it, add it, put, add it, add it. It's really nice if you have a lower model. Now you adapt mm -hmm. the law and, and just all, all you need to do is is um, uh, make sure the, the lower model is is. Uh, geez, I don't know. Kirk, is the model supposed to be wet or dry to keep it from uh, uh, from from uh, uh, sticking to it? Uh, Meg, Meg, can you? Answer that. Uh, Barry, our technicians are on tonight, too. Oh, so Meg. Lisa and Meg and Shane are here, so. Great, great. Uh, Meg, Meg, so. Yeah, the, the model's video. dry, but we add, like, a little coat of, like, um, Vaseline, so that way it doesn't, like, stick directly to it. Right, so dry model with a slight that that's great. Thank you. So like that's yeah. to keep it from sticking. And now, and now you've got, this way you don't have a lot of excess. And you get rid of uh, the excess. All right. Now you go and you heat it up and you go back to the mouth. But the key is when you put it into the uh, uh, appliance, 
the appliance has to be spot on dry. No adhesive, but very dry. And as long as the appliance is dry, the material will stick to it. Oh, very good. Thank right. you. All right. Thayer used to use soap. It was easier to clean up than Vaseline. Soap. Okay. Liquid yeah. soap. Liquid soap. There you go. Say so you can say, and as liquid dials cheaper than Vaseline, I just saved you a few pennies, Kirk. <laughs> Thanks, Barry. Uh, Barry, uh, can I can I add something? Um, w with the the top products, when I was um, uh, dealing with trying to increase retention, I would just add those beads into the appliance, um, put it all in hot water, uh, and then you know take it out, shake off the hot water, and place it right into the patient's mouth, and the beads would just you know like uh, adhere, of course, and then get into the interproximals and um, and just deal with it exactly the same way you, you would be dealing with it, uh, but all in the patient's mouth. Why, why do we need to go to the model? Is there a benefit to that? Or is it the only reason to go to the models, John, was when it's a full replacement of all the material. Oh, right. Okay, okay. So if you're so just enhancing retention, control. just enhancing retention, adding a few beads right into the appliance, go in the exactly. mouth and you're good. Uh, okay, exactly. I get it. Yeah. Exactly. Sorry if that wasn't clear. Thank you, John. Uh, what's uh, what's the warranty on this device? Kurt. Uh, what is it now, Barry? We've had some back and forth. Um, well, I was or at least I, I was just, I don't remember. I don't remember. But I will tell you this. This is interesting. Let me ask you, John. Have you ever made a tap? Have I ever made a tap? Yeah. Hundreds. Yes. Hundreds. Okay. Yes. How many times have you needed to use the warranty? Uh, well, occasionally. Okay. Yeah. I've, 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 you know, I, like I, within I, three I, years, the warranty is, by the way, their warranty is uh, three years. And right. so, you know, sometimes at uh, two and a half years, you know, we've had, you know, the, the lamination of the, of, of the liner or, you know, something else happened so okay. um, it, it's okay. not it's not a common event but yes I, i've had okay. to I, I, and i guess maybe because i use the thermocrome right uh, almost exclusively i never used the warranty never had a warranty issue with it I had to use the warranty for the tap so the, uh, kirk we need to look into that and see what 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 uh, what it is because we have you have to know but i don't know the answer well, as you know, the industry standard pretty well for, for most, if not all appliances, is three years for like at this level of appliance, right? So right. I, I would think that's probably going to be what you're going to be looking at, but that's just my humble opinion, you know? Yeah, I would. Well, I very frankly, I think it should be five because I don't think anything is going to happen to them. I mean, nothing happens to them, especially if in the, with, with, with limited. We save an awful lot of the um, untoward effects and the damage to the appliance by making them anterior midpoint stops. I'm totally convinced of that. And furthermore, in those cases where we want extremely limited verticals, I have no problem as a dentist going ahead and reducing and thinning the occlusal surfaces of the posteriors on because i'm not worried about them breaking because they're not on, under contact right? now personally i have no problem with re removing the first or second molar you know but some some dentists are concerned about that and i appreciate that i mean that's, right. you know, they, they, they can they can be concerned so so i just, you can just thin the hell out of it that's all yeah. What well, is uh, you, you mentioned uh, the the bite or the vertical? Uh, what uh, what are you looking for? Five millimeters entered incisally. Uh, so in we're, to place we're, your, suggesting, uh, we're suggesting that you use if you're using a George gauge, you use the five millimeter gauge. Yes, I, I have no problem. We need four. So right. we, we can re, you know if, if if you tell us uh, five millimeter, uh, that's a five mil, that's five millimeters. But we, I prefer minimal vertical. We'll we'll knock it down. We'll go, we'll go lower for you. See, one of the one of the <laughs> one of the advantages of the appliance is that there's because of the, the attachment, it is it allows a lot of leeway uh, in terms of. Uh, we're, I mean, we're working on on a hinge, you know, 
and it still has a great problem. Right. Now on the higher end, for those people that like to use more vertical for say, you know, certain situations, right. certain phenotypes, you know, uh, you're okay with six, you're okay with eight, I'm you're okay with eight. nine? I'm okay with eight, absolutely. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and you know, I, I gotta tell you, I never <laughs> used eight in my entire practice. But I retired right. before the before the real good literature came out to explain why six to eight millimeters under certain situations uh, may be may be appropriate. So uh, and and when you think about it, it makes a little. Uh, I, I don't think that the people that are using the pharyngometer or the or the uh, phonetic bite are lying when they say, "Well, I used all this vertical and the patient got better." And and. Uh, and I'm not saying that, that they need that all the patients that they did that needed it. But there may have been a few that in fact did. And uh, it doesn't doesn't surprise me. Then the literature comes out, out and says, well, yeah, and those few are usually obese males. Oh, wow. Okay, so that makes me think twice about uh, vertical when I'm dealing with have uh, a significant obstructive disorder in an obese male. So yeah, I go, I go, I can, I wouldn't have any trouble going eight. Yeah, there's been very little work done on that, but Lewandowski did uh, some, some, you know, gave us some insights on on that well, increase. Or he did it originally, uh, right, with Lewandowski, but then uh, it's been repeated, and look, uh, and. Uh, uh, Keith talks about it quite a bit. It's, it's yes. pretty impressive. Yeah. Well, because it was his appliance that ended up involved in creating the whole apnea guard thing, came out of uh, doing a study on his appliance. Right. They right. went from tap two to tap three, changed the vertical, and they saw, well, we got different results here with exactly. the two, two appliances, right? Absolutely. Anything else? Anybody else? I have a quick question, Barry. Please. That you sounds know, like Joan to me. It's Joan. Hi. Yeah, how did I know that? <laughs> Talk a lot. Um, yeah, no, this is, you, you laugh even as you were telling the question. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay, this is silly, but customs, is there not having shipped back and forth between Canada, is there a, a time frame that's a little bit different than, nope. say, just... We've no, already okay. we've tested it. So we've okay. tested it. And, 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 and uh, you know, that was... We, we were we were traveling in some unknown water um, and uh, so we, we, we wanted to be sure and uh, the Shannon uh, and, and, uh, and Kirk together worked and they found that uh, they were very comfortable with the 10 day guarantee so when you're making your appointment you if you're scanning you, you can be comfortable going 11 days out and knowing that you'll have the appliance. Okay, good. Thank you. Sure, thank you. Now, there's a question here, Barry, uh, from uh, Dana, uh, saying four millimeter anterior or posterior. Anterior. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you, you would normally recommend it be made without posterior contact, of course. That would be your default, right? It's not only our default. Um, it, it, it's 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 the way it will be made, unless for some reason someone asks for posterior contact. We can build it up and create stops. Um, there are those people who talk about you know that gives posterior support, and and again, for those I don't mean to bore anyone that that, that that's, that's heard me more than once, which most everyone here has. But um, when you consider the, the force vectors of the anterior temporalis plus the masseter, there's nothing to bring that condyle up and back. And when we look at um, condyles that are clenching hard against the anterior components, they don't, um, they, 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 they don't move. They don't go up and back because the force vectors are anterior. So, the only thing posterior support does is provide higher level EMG. So there's no reason for that. And as a, as a result, um, uh, I don't see any advantage. Now, having said that, when we're talking about pain, you know, there are no rules. 
So there were those patients that we put in anterior midpoint stops and, and, and we weren't getting any better. And then we went and, and, and balanced the occlusion with a posterior stop and lo and behold, they got better. Or, or as they were, certainly other things were happening at the time, but that seemed to contribute. To explain that, of course I can't. You know, I can't. Uh, I don't, you know, there, there are no rules. And, and so, so it, I'm not saying it's wrong to put in posterior support. I'm saying that the concept that we need to have, uh, yeah, I'm saying there is no such thing as posterior support. That doesn't make sense. But if you, if you want, for some reason, you want full con, you want contact of the appliance. Yeah, we can make that for you. I, I just don't see, see any reason, any reason. And I can only tell you in you know, 20 years of an anterior midpoint stop appliance, we, 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 don't, we didn't see any more occlusal changes. And, and interestingly enough, I don't know. Let me ask you. It seems to me that when I finish practicing and then I deal with Don and I deal with all on a regular basis, I'm on the phone every day with someone in dental sleep medicine. When I ask the question, with the current appliances, how often are you dealing with significant dental change? The, someone tell me why that number seems to have decreased over time. I, 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 don't, I don't have an answer to that, but I think it's, it, it seems very clear. I don't have any evidence that it has, but it seems very clear. Uh, we're, but I believe totally that we were getting less changes uh, because of the answer. Now, people get real upset, you know, when you talk about anterior components on a non-dental appliance, you talk about an NPI or a B split, and they, and they think they're, they're going to get extrusion, or they think they're going to get pressure on the anterior teeth, and they're, they're going to get screwed up bites, and, uh, and, uh, and you're going to screw people up for life. <coughs> well, I, everyone who knows that we do these routinely on patients 24-7 minus eating, and, and the vast majority of the time don't get those changes. But, but we're even less likely to get those changes with anterior component when we're dealing with uh, sleep appliances because we've got they're, 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 we've got appliances over the teeth. So, um, especially if, they're, if they're, they're fully covered, which I, I don't think matters as much as other people think so. So I, I love cutting them short. Patient, the less we put in somebody's mouth, and one of, one of the things about the dorsal is that they were breaking on some regular basis, obviously on a significant rupture. And so, um, I, Don's going to laugh at this because there's this story that there's a, 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 I was teaching for Sondermen and there was this patient who was from Indiana and the patient kept breaking. They went through five Sondermen appliances and they kept changing and making them stronger and they kept breaking them the fence. And they said, well, you, you got to be the most aggressive rupture in the world is that they just couldn't keep it in. I said, well, but we know where to send you. Because remember, I'm teaching from Sonda. Well, so they're great. And, God, what's that? and he tells his story, and I look at him and said, Sure, I can help. What do I give him? A tap. <laughs> so then they called the guy. The guy called, he said, He's thrilled. How did you help him? <laughs> I gave him somebody else's appliance. So uh, it's, it, 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 it's, it's, you know, to me, that's that's a tremendous advantage, especially for blood. And now, when we're looking at the number of people uh, that have some degree of nocturnal power function, why would I why would I not give them an appliance that has the potential to decrease uh, not only their nasal resistance but their likelihood of um, uh, a, 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 a effort, no of activity, their likelihood of increasing. Um, uh, uh, peripheral central uh, sensitization uh, it, it just it just makes more sense it makes more All sense right. yes i've placed posterior contact a handful of times on taps on pain-free bruxers that would keep breaking bars or breaking the appliance detaching the titration assembly right so if you have that monster bruxer who's pain-free it can save you some aggravation right agreed agreed and so we're, we're below their adaptive capacity in terms of pain, and, and now we've, we've altered the force vector in terms of causing force on the, on, on the anterior clients. And if anyone has those patients, we'll get you through, we'll, 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 we'll guide you through. That's what Barry, if I can jump in here, sorry, if I can jump in here, it's almost nine o'clock and 
people may start to jump off. So Absolutely. I just want to make sure you see this QR code. Let me know uh, uh, um, if you can see this QR code so yes. that you can scan that, please. And it'll take you to a very short little questionnaire so that that gets to me and uh, you qualify uh, for your CE points for the AGD and even just regular CE points. So having said that, that uh, the little well, bit- I, of If you jump it off, remember this, uh, a couple things. One, if you're interested in getting started, uh, or you have questions, just email me or call me. You know, just email me or call me or, and if you have any questions. If you're interested in getting started, contact Kirk, uh, the, the, the Sapin Accounting, and we can get a, a, an idea of, of some details about what the appliances you're, you're looking for. Download the prescription so that you, you, you get a feel, you're ready to uh, make, make, make those decisions when you, when, you, when you see your patients. And use the, uh, the introduction code. And more than, and as as importantly, I'd love to see any of you. Uh, if anyone's interested in uh, in retaking, getting a refresher of the course, I'd love to see you. So, thank you so much, everyone. This was great. I really appreciate thank you. Thank you, Barry. Thank you, Barry. Thank you, Barry. Thank, thank you. Barry. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Really. Thank you. Good night, everyone. See you soon. Good night. Thank you. Hi, guys. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Yes. Very yeah. high. Did you get, you got your papers, right? Not yet. I didn't see them yet. But actually, I want to talk about this patient, if you have a second, because I think Morpheus might be the perfect appliance sure, for myself sure. today. Suzanne, Suzanne, I emailed you this morning a folder. A folder. Okay. Let me, I saw the email with the webinar. But I didn't see your other email. I will look again and well, see. Yeah, and it's, uh, you know what? At the end of this meeting, I'll resend it. So that way you'll have it. Perfect. I do. I mean, we can talk after or now. But I did yeah. have a patient. I was curious yeah, to ask you about so, this. So, if anyone wants to hear it, they can hear it. Okay, you can talk. So. <laughs> okay. So I have this gentleman. He is definitely CPAP and a tolerant. Can't use it. Came in today. He has premolar to premolar. But he has crowns on every tooth actually i've never seen it this bad crowns on every tooth except for 22 through 27 and literally i asked him i said did you have crowns on here because they're broken down to every tooth has been root canaled um it looks like they were prepped but he said no i've never had crowns on this lower front teeth it's just i've been grinding all the way down so he's hitting these nubbins on his upper teeth i don't it is crazy, but I'm curious to know if Morpheus would be good for him um, because he is a Medicare patient, and I don't know how much retention we can get. I mean, he's you, missing he's a lot. So, of so one of one of one of one of the advantages of and it's not necessarily Morpheus. One of the advantages, Suzanne, of any appliance that's lined with therm is yes. that we get maximum retention sure so if we're going to go to a connected appliance we go maximum retention one of the issues that in those cases when you go to a, a dorsal is mm -hmm. even the dorsal requires x amount of retention throughout the arches and you could run yes. you with retention with uh with there is we can get real, really good retention on really lousy teeth Yes, yeah, so, this is uh, like that. <laughs> furthermore, hopefully, we're going to turn to you and say, Doctor, when? My goodness, don't you think we should fix my teeth? And this way you can He's fix He's a Medicare it. patient, though, Barry, isn't he? Yes, oh. he's a Medicare patient. Mm -hmm. Oh, gotcha. All right. Yes, uh, and well, so that's the thing. He doesn't even want to fix his teeth. <laughs> give, a, give, us a, give us a half a week and we should we should have PDAC for you. Oh, really? Okay, yeah, so half a week? Yeah, well, I can tell him before. Within a week, we should have it. Yep. Great. Because I think this would be the best. After listening to this webinar, I think this would be his best option. Right. Um, mm -hmm. That's exciting. Kirk, re remind me, Kirk, uh, to call Suzanne when we, when we get it. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Right. And I, you know, I know there's no warranty, but pretty much, of course, if he does end up, because I was looking at his mouth, pretty much to redo his, he would need full mouth reconstruction. Right. or implants and um, that's what he would need but he's he's 81 but he's functioning 
fine with the teeth that he has. And I said, well, you know, I'm not worried about the teeth at the moment because he functions fine in his mind. He feels like he's doing just fine. It's his breathing. He's had a heart attack. He said everything. I don't know how to tell you this, but yes. 81, 81 doesn't sound quite so old as it used to sound. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I know. I agree. <laughs> I agree. But he literally, he presented to me. He's like, you know, I have to take in consideration. I am 81. And I said, you have so much spunk. He's so energetic. I love it. He, I mean, he jokes, everything. But, you know, I always, I never look at You can tell a joke, get out. Oh, lots, lots of, you know, but he understood his wife was there. She's like, be ecstatic. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. He should be ecstatic. So he, he's great. I just want to help him and I want to use the best appliance for him. But his mouth is definitely uh, something that I'm not quite used to. You're here within a week and I will get right to you. Perfect. Perfect. Right. That sounds great. And I will also check that, uh, that, um, the email. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much, Barry. This is a great course as always, or a great, um, meeting. So thank you for holding this. This is great. I'm excited. Right. Anybody else? Are we good? I actually had a question, Dr. Glassman. Who, who's that? Roland. Oh, Roland. Where are you? Where are you now? Roland? <laughs> I'm, I'm in Oregon now. Still, okay. Still in Oregon, yeah. Okay. Um, and how's your brother but, doing? Yeah. What's that? How's your brother doing? Um, he's yeah. doing good. He's doing hey. good. Um, he says hi. But I, uh, I had a quick question about like a patient who is transitioning. You know, they they have sleep apnea. They have a B splint right now. To transition them into a Morpheus, you recommend you know cutting it off at the premolars like you would a B splint but also doing a low profile? Uh, I, I, not, not, you know, so if I'm a B splint, I'm not sure. If you said well, like, you know, they, they now have sleep apnea. The, the B splint yeah, isn't sufficient right, for that. Right, I understand. So so the Morpheus makes sense because now we're going to stay with a B splint. So now all the other decisions are based on other factors. They're based okay. on um, uh, the, re the, the needed retention. So okay. But my, my, I think of this as the default. Bear with me. Think, here's the default. The default is the mandibular plate, thermal line, low profile. Um, full arch to the mesial marginal ridge of the, po of the most posterior tube. That's the default from my thinking. Megan, did you hear me? I'm sure you did. Yeah. So that's, the, I think of that as the default. Now, what are we going to change? Well, we're going to go from low profile to full profile if we need to go to uh, a triple lemon for any reason. We need to go to full profile or longer profile if, if in fact, we we don't have good retention on the teeth. They're, they don't have any curve. No, the curvature is, is minimal and we're going to need increased retention. We're going to go to uh, uh, a shorter coverage if I'm worried about comfort and, and I've got real good retention in the anterior section, great. Then I can go to, to my cusp and leave the back cell altogether. I can do that. And we'll go with comfort. This guy's been wearing a B-split. That'll, that'll be familiar to him. Mm -hmm. So those are the, those are the, that, that's my thing. That help? Yeah, that, that does help. You know, some, something that I ran into with the with using tap appliances in the in the thermocryl is, is uh, sometimes it just becomes way too tight, and it causes that you know pain. And so I um, I was gonna you know try the dual laminate or the triple. No 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 yeah, of course they change. Did you ever do cut a second molar and have plenty of occlusal room and then come back? Just say it. So, so, so the teeth have changed. It's no problem. You take the thermocryl, you put the put it in the hot water and readapt it, going up and down, and then several times so that it's not too tight. Take it out and let it bend. Set. It will no longer be tight. Okay. Thank you. That's the biggest advantage of thermocryl, is that you have total control over that, over that retention. Sounds good. Is, 
Barry, does the new Thermocrill last longer, or is it about the same? About the same. Because we're, we're not, the, uh, I can't speak to the Thermocrill, which is a um, different material that, that, that Keith is now using. So I can't speak to that. I don't even, I don't know much about that. This is very much the same material. But the reality is, is that, you know, again, we tell our patients with the Thermocrill, take the appliance out, rinse it off, put it into uh, a, a, a container with filled with water and peroxide and leave it there and then take it out. Uh, some people change that peroxide every day, some people change it every third day and you can leave it, seriously, you can leave it for up to a week before it's safe. And that, that, that changed everything in terms of staining and really kept it, kept them really, really clean. Great. We good? Anything else? Well, this was fun. Thank you, everybody. Really, yeah, I thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you Barry. I appreciate, you. I appreciate the opportunity. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Barry. Fun, as always. And thank you, folks, for joining us. Uh, 910, I think, uh, was a pretty engaging evening all the way around. So have a nice evening and um, stay tuned for our next session. I don't even know what it's going to be, but uh, you'll hear about it soon by email. We just fly by the seat of our pants here. It's more exciting that way. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.